As we've seen in administration, utilizing the application, making maintenance changes are very simple, very easy for a business or finance person to do within the application. Now we had earlier, we introduced the concept of a business process flow. Managing a business process flow is something, again, that typically a business or a finance user can do, again, right within the administration console as we see here. So we're going to take a look at modifying an existing business process flow. As we mentioned, OutlookSoft provides a lot of these business process flows right out of the box. So it's packaged functionality that you can take advantage of. But a lot of times, you'll need to modify the business process flow to something specific for your organization and your specific process. So we're going to follow our example of adding the new hybrid product line. Just as we added the product earlier, now we want to come in and modify the business process flow to accommodate a new schedule that has to do with the new hybrid product line. So we're going to choose our monthly forecast business process flow. And as we'll see again, the action pane is going to update and we can select that we want to modify the business process flow. Notice that I have the ability here to do some basic setup, things like define the timing of the business process flow. How often is it going to occur? So if you have a process that occurs every month or every day or weekly, yearly, for example, you can do that. Or you can do a one-time setup for the business process flow. You also have the ability to remind users via email notification that a process is about to start. So it just gives them a, a quick little reminder uh, that they're able to um, get in and, and begin working on a business process flow. We're going to work over to define steps and substeps, and here's all of these steps to our business process flow. So notice we've got three major steps, and then within that we have a variety of substeps, uh, which are things that the user can complete in any order that they want. So I'm going to go ahead and add a new substep under the units and rates step. So I'm just going to select add new step. And the instruction for this, or the name, is going to be Tax Incentives. And the instruction, we'll go ahead and type Enter Tax Incentives for the hybrid product line. And this is going to be what the user will see when they go to complete this step in the business process flow. This is the instruction they'll see. This is the name that will show up as part of the business process flow. And again, the assistant is kind of guiding me through this particular process. Now, I don't want tax incentives to appear this far down in the list. I'd really like it to appear um, right under the top-down adjustments. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and move this up in the order okay, just by clicking on the little up arrow. So it's pretty easy, again, for me to make that change. Now what I need to do, that I've now since I've added the sub-step, is I need to define what's going to happen when a user selects this step in the business process flow. And as you can see, I have the variety to select any of the interfaces of the application. So we already took a look, took a look at OutlookSoft for Excel. We've looked at OutlookSoft Web. So in this case, let's say this is an input schedule within Excel that I want to open when a user selects a step. So we can choose OutlookSoft for Excel. We'll go ahead and select Schedule Library because it's an input schedule. And again, you'll notice all of the tasks available in Excel are available here to utilize within a business process flow. And then I can simply browse to find the file, okay? And it happens to be our tax incentive schedule here. So we'll go ahead and select that. And then if I want to, I can add any additional steps or substeps to a business process flow as well. So remember, um, when we're working in Excel, for example, or in the browser, in the action pane, there's a different list of items that will appear that are available for a user to select, different actions they can take. If I want to modify that list or if I want to add some selections for a user, I can do that here. So since this is an input schedule, I might want a user to be able to send data. So I can select that and then I can simply select the action around sending the workbook for that particular um, action to appear in the action pane. And then finally, I would go ahead and save the business process flow, which we won't do in this case, um, just in the interest of time. And now we're ready to go ahead and close admin and return to the performance management dashboard where we'll take it a look at a business process flow from an end user perspective.